Hey, it's me, Kristen, and in this video, we are going to go out to dinner without even leaving our house. So if you'd like to see how I do this and, you know, what's up, then just keep watching. So for my first um, demonstration here, I'm going to do some beer-battered onion rings. So I have this enormous Walla Walla sweet onion. I love Walla Wallas in the summer, and I thought these would make really good beer-battered onion rings. So I'm just peeling it and then slicing it into thick rings, like so, as you can see here. This was way more onion than I needed, but anywho. So I put all the onion rings in a bowl and then covered them in flour, set that aside. That's the first step. And then I'm going to put together the batter for the rings. So in a large bowl, I'm going to put in a little over a cup of flour. And then we're going to season it up. I have garlic powder. I'm just eyeballing it. Just put in what I, what I need here. Some seasoned salt. Or you can do regular salt if you prefer. But I like seasoned salt. And then paprika. Like that. This is a nice little shake. It doesn't need to be a lot. Like that. I'll link this recipe for you in my description. And then coarse ground black pepper. I've made this so many times. We like to alternate between like fries and onion rings. Not all the time, mind you. Just sometimes I like to do this. Not trying to eat too much deep fried food, you know what I'm saying? But once in a while, it's a nice treat to go with your dinner. Okay, so this is beer battered onion rings. And normally I like to use an IPA, which will give you better, you know, like a hoppier flavor in your onion rings. But I only had this Keystone Light. But so I'm just gonna use that instead. Or you could use club soda if you don't wanna go with a beer. Um, I mean, you could use water, but you want to go with something carbonated because that's going to make it a little bit lighter when you're frying it. And yeah, the end texture will just be a little bit lighter. And, you know, it's just better that way. So I'm going with one beer. I'll stick it in there. And you want this consistency of the batter to be that of pancake batter. That's what you're looking for. It's okay if it's lumpy. You don't need to worry about that at all. That's not gonna matter in the end. So I ended up using this whole beer. And the, and you wanna set it aside for about you know 10 minutes before you fry them. And I did this in the order of, I did my onion rings first and then I worked on my burgers. Okay, and then it's time to dredge. So I take my floured onions and I put them into the beer batter. And this part here is gonna, what, what's gonna make them kind of more restaurant style is panko breadcrumbs. It's gonna give your onion rings even more of an amazing crunch and texture. So dredge the floured rings into the batter and then put them directly into the panko. And I dredged all of the onions first and then I fried them. That was easier. And obviously I had way more onion rings left at the end, so I just kept going until I was out of the batter and then that was it. So we just did it like that. It's just easier to just kind of do them all at once instead of like as you're frying because this is a really messy step <laughs> of the process. It's really messy. And it's just, this this is not fun, okay? I just gotta say that. So if you wanna do it, it's just kind of a, this is just not the fun part of the process. But it's worth it. In the end, you get a really good onion ring. Now it's time to fry. So I have my fryer preheated to 350. And I'm just dropping them in, you know, some at a time. Don't want to crowd the basket too much. 
And also I wanted to add, if you wanted to do regular breadcrumbs instead of the panko, that would work just as good too. But anyway, I just fry them till you have them to the golden brown that you prefer, and then they're done. Take them out, salt them, and then I just had my oven on the keep warm setting, and they stayed plenty warm until we were ready to eat. So now it's time to put together the burger. So I have about one pound of 93.7, and I just put it in this bowl here, and I'm just seasoning with the seasonings you're seeing. And then I'm just gonna roll them up we're just sure. I'll link, I did follow a little, a, a recipe a little bit on this, but I will link it in the description box for you. And then this here is bacon grease. Um, I only had 93.7 in my freezer and that's a little bit too lean, I think for burgers. So I wanted to add a little bit more fat to my meat mixture. So I, so I added in some bacon fat and also that's why I'm putting in a little bit of cheese too. And it will also taste great also, but that's why I'm doing that. Yeah, because I just didn't want them to dry out when I'm cooking them on high heat and pressing them with a burger press. I just didn't want them to dry out, so that's why I added the extra fat. So to portion out each burger, I'm just using my large cookie scoop here. The recipe said you want about three ounce balls, and I don't have a food um, what is that called? Scale. I need to get one. They're not very, they're not very expensive and I think they'd be pretty handy to have around the house. I need to get one, but anywho. So I just decided to use a large cookie scoop to portion out the burgers and it worked out really good. So then I just place each ball on a, on a little square of parchment paper and then I'm just gonna keep these in the, in the fridge until I'm ready to cook them up. Um, I did this in between doing the onion rings and everything else. So I just wanted to get them mixed up and have them ready to go in the fridge. And yeah, so I didn't have to worry about this step later. So there they all, all are ready to go. And then also I wanted to get a dip in sauce ready also. So I have some mayo, of course you need mayo. And then I'm gonna put in just a little bit of horseradish, just like that. I had this in my fridge anyway, so I thought mm, might as well throw it in there, use it up a little bit. Not too much though, horseradish can be overpowering. I don't like too much of it but I thought it re went really well in the dipping sauce. And then sriracha. I really like to have a sriracha dipping sauce, mayo sriracha dipping so sauce to go with my onion rings. I just really prefer it, I don't know. Usually I'm just all about the fry sauce, you know, which is just ketchup and mayo, and some people put mustard in it. But um, for these onion rings, I just really like to have a sriracha mayo. So put that together. I tasted it. It did need a little bit more sriracha in there. So I put a little bit more and then it was perfect. So then again, I just put this in the fridge and let it sit there until we were ready to eat. Perfect. Okay. So more onions. I decided I wanted to dice up some onions to put under the burgers as I'm, um, as I'm cooking them. I thought it would give them some really good flavor. So here I am. I've already made a few burgers at this point, as you can see, but I just put a pile of onions on the pan and then I put the burger directly on top of the onions, get out my handy dandy burger press, push them down nice and hard until we have a nice crust. Then I turn them over and then I'm putting bacon on. This one's for my husband. He loves bacon on his burger. And then two slices of American cheese, a little dome on there to help melt the cheese a little better. And voila, there it is. These turned out so good. Um, and I toasted some burger buns. Um, you just wanna cook the burgers for a few minutes on each side until you have a nice crust on the outside. 
and they were done. They were perfect. These don't take any time at all to cook because they're really thin. And these also would be a really good option to have in the, the winter months coming up. Because sometimes you're in the mood for a burger, but of course you're not going to go outside and use your grill in the wintertime, okay? So this would be a really good um, variation on it so that you can still have a burger in the wintertime. I would do this also if I had a Blackstone. This would be perfect, of course, but I do not have one. So if you don't have a Blackstone, a cast iron pan will work really well, trust me. If you have it, if it's seasoned properly, your cast iron skillet will work really good. So here it is, all done. Just did lettuce and a pickle and onion, of course. And this meal was so good. We really enjoyed dinner last night. So I hope you tried this, and I hope you um, stay tuned for more uh, videos. I'll have some more out soon, and I will see you later.